Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 34 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website, where I'll help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, let's explore MIDI effects in Logic Pro. If you remember from video number 31, which was all about the Logic Pro mixer, we discussed the signal flow of both audio track types and channel strips, as well as software instrument track types and channel strips. And as I explained signal flow relating to software instrument channel strips and track types, there was a glaring omission in my explanation. This was intentional and by design. I mean, these videos get quite dense with information, so I didn't want to muddy the waters related to the mixer, but that's what today's video is all about. If you take a look, we have an empty software instrument track loaded into the tracks area, and we have the electric piano software instrument plugin loaded into the channel strip for this track. If we bring up the musical typing by holding command and pressing K on our Mac's keyboard, I said in my signal flow explanation for software instrument tracks that any notes that you perform with a controller or any MIDI events that have already been recorded into the tracks area and are played back, pass along directly to the software instrument in your channel strip, telling that instrument which notes to play, when to play them, for how long, and how hard or soft to play those notes. And honestly, that's all true. If I perform a C major chord using the musical typing with my Mac keyboard, my Mac's keyboard will communicate to the software instrument and will hear those notes play back. And if there are any plugins loaded onto the software instrument channel strip, we'll hear this performance through those audio plugins. Okay, so, so far so true. But the glaring omission in my explanation that I skipped over is the fact that you can manipulate your MIDI events that you're communicating to the software instrument before they arrive at the instrument using MIDI effects. The MIDI effect plugins can be found right above the software instrument field of a software instrument channel strip. And just like with any other plugin in Logic Pro, we can load a MIDI effect just by clicking on the empty MIDI effect field. Once we click, we get this pop-up menu offering us different MIDI effect plugins. And Logic Pro comes loaded at the time of this video with nine different MIDI effects. So just hover your mouse over the MIDI effect that you want to load onto your software instrument channel strip and click. Okay, so we've now loaded the arpeggiator. If I now perform a C major chord using the musical typing, the arpeggiator processes the incoming notes and the result that's sent to the software instrument, the electric piano, is an arpeggio of the C major chord walking consecutively through the three different notes of the chord over and over again at a 16th note rate. We can add more than one MIDI effect plugin to further process our MIDI events just by hovering our mouse over the empty section right below the first MIDI effect, clicking once again and selecting another MIDI effect plugin. All right, so we've now loaded the modulator right underneath the arpeggiator. Let's close it up. We can reorder our MIDI effect plugins just by clicking, holding, and dragging one MIDI effect plugin over another. Okay, so now the modulator will process our MIDI events before they arrive at the arpeggiator to be further processed. We can load a MIDI effect plugin directly in between two MIDI effects just by hovering our mouse till we see this green highlighted line in between. And we'll load maybe the chord trigger. We can bypass our MIDI effect plugins by hovering our mouse over the left-hand side of each plugin. We'll see this power button. And if we click, We've now bypassed the modulator plugin. We can power back up this plugin just by clicking again on the left-hand side. We can open a MIDI effect plugin to see its interface just by clicking on the center of the plugin, as well as close the plugin by clicking once again. And we can remove or replace a plugin by clicking on the right-hand side of each plugin slot. So we could either choose no plugin, or we could replace a MIDI effect plugin. Okay, so we've now replaced the chord trigger plugin with the randomizer plugin, right? So if we replace maybe the randomizer with the transposer, I just wanna show you, let's power down the arpeggiator for right now. With the transposer plugin, I can set a root as well as a scale. Let's actually set this to F natural minor. If I perform a C major chord, take a listen to what's actually played through our software instrument. In fact, my chord has been transposed to match that of the scale that I've set in the transposer. And then if we add the arpeggiator by powering back up, if we now take a listen to the chord that I perform, my not C major chord has been further processed by the arpeggiator 
And if we begin recording, I'll press R on my Mac's keyboard and we'll record this chord. You can see both on the musical typing, as well as if we close these plugins, holding shift and clicking on the close button to close them both and open the piano roll. Let's close the automation and let's expand this view. And we can see that I performed C, E, and G. So this is the power of MIDI effects is that we can process the incoming note events before they hit the software instrument in really fun and creative ways. So for today, I wanna to show you three MIDI effects in particular that I think will be really helpful to a lot of different folks. Of course, Logic Pro has nine different MIDI effects that we could explore, but let's be real. If I talk about all nine in this video, we're gonna be here all day. Let's start out by exploring the Arpeggiator, which is an awesome tool for generating new creative ideas with minimal effort. With the Arpeggiator, you can generate arpeggios, which is a succession of notes in a chord. If we hold down a single note on a controller, we just hear that single note repeated over and over again at this rate of 16th notes. Whereas if we hold down more than one note, the arpeggiator walks through all these notes in succession. We can adjust the speed of our arpeggios by using the rate control. So we can either drag on the control itself. As we drag the control to the left-hand side, our arpeggios get slower in their rate. Whereas if we drag the control to the right, they get faster. Pretty fun. Additionally, we can also click on a drop-down menu right below the rate subheading and choose from various musical values directly. From here, we can choose in what order our arpeggios work their way through the different notes. With the leftmost option, when we hold down a chord, the notes start out from the lowest note in the chord and work their way up, and then start back down at the bottom note and work their way up again. With the next option, our notes start from the top note, the highest note in the chord that we're holding, and work their way down. Next, we can have our notes start from the bottom note, work their way up, and then the arpeggio will turn around and start from the top and work its way back down. After that, we can have the arpeggio start from the bottommost note and then go to the topmost note and then go down to the second lowest note and then the second highest note and then kind of work its way inwards to the center notes. We have a random option. So as I hold down the notes, the notes will be played back in no particular order. Or we can have the notes play back exactly in the order that I hold them down. So I'll start out by pressing C and then E and then G. Then I'll do G, E and C. So the performance order of the arpeggio is determined by which notes are held down in which order. And on top of that, we can introduce variations in the performance up to four. If I hold down a chord, we go up to four, as well as octave ranges. or we can introduce inversions. So there's a lot of creative control and power with the arpeggiator for generating new creative ideas for your productions. There's two other sections of the arpeggiator that I wanna point out to you. At the top of the arpeggiator, we have this latch button. If we enable latch, the moment that we press any keys on our keyboard, regardless of how long we hold the keys, the notes that we press will be arpeggiated indefinitely. And if we press latch again, we stop the playback of the arpeggiator. If we start up the latch function again, I'm gonna press a couple notes of a chord to start up the arpeggiator. But if I then press another key somewhere else on the keyboard, our arpeggio will then be transposed around the keys. Gotta say that's pretty cool. And this is all because of the latch mode of transpose that's been set in the drop-down menu right here. And if we click, 
There are several other latch modes that we can choose. The last thing I want to show you when it comes to the arpeggiator is the two different modes or patterns that we can work with. There's live mode, which we've been working with as we hold down keys and arpeggio is performed in a particular order. But there are also grid patterns with which we can perform with, which are closer to gated or step sequence sort of patterns. For example, if we select the escalating groove, we can see that something very unique is going on here. And if we speed up the flow of the notes, and I'll also bump up my velocity. Take a listen. Pretty interesting. If we explore some of these other options. Go through a little more. And we can adjust the level of each note or step as we see fit. We can adjust the length as well as add chords at specific steps. So a ton of options to dig into when working with the arpeggiator in your projects. Next, we have Chord Trigger, which is a fantastic MIDI effect plugin that allows you to play potentially massive chords across the entire keyboard with the press of a single note on your controller. For example, if I press A on my Max keyboard to perform the note of C2, watch this. I'm playing an entire chord with four different notes simultaneously just by pressing that one key. And if I press the other keys along the musical typing, we'll hear that chord transposed up and down the keys. So I bet if you're anything like me, maybe you're not too savvy with a controller or a keyboard, Chord Trigger allows you to bridge that gap between having a creative idea and then executing on that creative idea. If we click on the preset menu in Chord Trigger, there are many different multi and single options for different voicings. For example, we could choose between major and minor triads. And if I play any of these keys, or if we go to multi voicing, we can play different guitar open chords. Amazing. But a lot of the power of Chord Trigger is the fact that you can program your own chords using the single and multi options. With single mode, we can go right over to learn. And then we're just going to hold down a chord across the keys to program that chord into Chord Trigger. Okay, my chord has now been programmed across all of the keys. So if I press any key anywhere across the keyboard, work our way up an octave. Those four notes are just being transposed up and down the scale. And we can even limit our trigger keys to a particular octave. So if maybe we set this to C3 to C4, if I play C3, we get our chord. But if I go down an octave, press C2, we don't get that performance of that chord at C2. With multi, we can actually program specific chords at particular notes to be performed. For example, with C2, I'll perform this chord. And with E, I'll perform this chord. And with D. Once we press learn again, our program chords are now laid down to these root notes. So if I press C2. If I press E. And D, there's our three different program chords. And also, if you need to be able to transpose the output of these chords up and down the scale, we can go right down to chord transpose, and we'll bump this up maybe an octave, so 12 semitones. Now, if we once again press on our keys, there you go. Even though we're performing these chords using C2, E2 and D2, the perform output of these chords is further up the scale by an octave. The third MIDI effect plugin that I think is so helpful when you're writing and producing is the Transposer plugin. We actually already saw Transposer in action earlier in the video, 
but it's just such a helpful plugin to ensure that your performances are staying in the key and scale of your projects. So once again, we can actually conform our MIDI note events to a particular root note, as well as scale. And now anything that I play on my Max keyboard will conform to that of B natural minor. So I'll actually play every note that's not part of the scale. And as you can hear, everything that I play has just been transposed to the appropriate note based on the root note and scale. And we can further transpose if we need to by semitones. Pretty awesome. So let's set this back. And the last thing that I wanna show you for today is how to record the output of your MIDI effect plugins directly to the software instrument track in the tracks area. First, let's set up chord trigger. I'll select the preset for major triads to be played up and down the keys. If I press any key on my Max keyboard. Cool, so we can now perform that chord across the keys. I'll set the transposer to that, again, a B natural minor. So even though chord trigger is going to play in major triads when I press any key, the output of transposer will transpose to B natural minor. Great. And then we'll open up arpeggiator and we'll set this to maybe just live mode in an upward sequence in an eighth note pattern. And now our major triad chords, which are being transposed to B natural minor, will now be performed as an arpeggio. Cool. So now if I press record and I press the A key on my Max keyboard to perform the note of C, let's see what's actually recorded into the tracks area. Check that out. If we open the editor, all we have is a note of C. Despite the fact that we have so much processing of our MIDI note events. So I would prefer to actually record all of these changes directly to the tracks area. Since 10.7.5, we can do this just by hovering our mouse over our MIDI effect plugin and clicking on the right hand side. And right at the bottom, we can choose to record MIDI up till this particular plugin. So now if I press record, all the output from chord trigger, transposer, and the arpeggiator will be recorded into the tracks area. And if we open the editor, all right, there is our chord arpeggiating through the different notes. Pretty awesome. If we close the editor, Thanks to the yellow arrows, we know exactly where the MIDI effect output is being recorded from. In this case, we're including all MIDI output from chord trigger into transposer into the arpeggiator, but we can change the placement of this recording output just by clicking on the right-hand side of a different MIDI effect plugin. And we can choose to just record the MIDI output from chord trigger. And if we press record, if we take a look in the editor, the only MIDI output that we've recorded is the major triad chord from Chord Trigger, which doesn't include the transposition from Transposer, as well as the arpeggiation from the arpeggiator. So once you've laid down a part that you're happy with, so let's get rid of these three other regions. So now we have this MIDI recording with Chord Trigger, Transposer, and the arpeggiator. We no longer need any of these plugins for the playback of this particular region. We still see the arrows, so if we click, we can just disable record MIDI to track here. And if we take a listen to our MIDI region, there it is. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more tomorrow in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.